I want to talk about how it looks and and contextualizing it with some of these other you know quote unquote contenders right now. Um, you know, here's the thing about rankings. I know the discussion, the talking point coming out of the Nebraska game on Saturday was, is this team going to be ranked number one come Sunday uh, because of how Georgia struggled? And, and again, it, I know we write about it, and the rankings are are important for ratings and television, and you know gives people a sense of the caliber of team that uh, I mean, the AP's voted on by the media. So those are people that I think watch football. Some, some of them mm, don't, but I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. And I, Listen, also, if you're, I mean, yeah. if you're an AP voter who has Michigan at eight right now, I'm not really taking you seriously, but I think, yeah. you know, if you want to argue them in the top three or four, if you want to argue with them at one, fine. If you want to argue that they're fourth, fine. I don't care. Um, Cause ultimately we're five weeks into the season. There's so much that's just going to sort itself out on the field. And we're not even going to see college football playoff rankings until what that last week of October. So none of that really matters yet. Uh, but for me, I think the one that I probably put the most credence into right now is uh, Bill Connolly's S and P plus. And you know, th- those are predictive. Uh, the, there's some preseason data baked into that, but it's not like, I st- I got to be honest. I mean, we write about FPI on the e- you know the ESPN FBI every week. I don't know what goes into that. I know that uh, you know when it spits out win probabilities, it'll tell you that Michigan is about a thirty five has like a thirty five percent chance to beat Ohio State at home. Which anyone who flips on the film of the way the, these games have gone the last few years, that's knows that's not the case. And most of the players are the same. Uh, and also, it's at home. So again. I'm not exactly sure what goes into all that, but uh, Michigan's still number one in Bill Connolly's SP plus. Uh, and he put out something, I think it was either Sunday night or, or sometime early on Monday. Uh, just kind of talking about where Michigan or teams like Michigan and Georgia and, and Texas, which I think right now are kind of the three. Uh, when you see LS, you give up whatever it was, 713 yards of offense at Ole Miss over the weekend. That's I think that takes a little bit of shine off of Florida State's win over LSU. I do think that Michigan, Georgia, Texas, whatever combination you want to throw them in, are, are probably the three best teams right now. But this is something that I found interesting. Um, Georgia, it's similar to Michigan. You know, when you go through and look at uh, Bill's story, I won't, you know, we, we don't give away other people's paywalled content for free. We don't do that with ours either, but... Something that I thought was interesting in there is that they are extri- they're similar to Michigan last year in a lot of ways. Where yeah, they they are taking care of their business. They've been mostly dominant at times, but they're getting off to slow starts and kind of having to figure it out in the second half. And when you look at that, I mean, we saw it with Michigan. It did catch up to them last year uh, in that TCU game. And on the flip side, you look at what Michigan's doing. And I know there's there's been some local discussion about how they've had to, quote unquote, pull away from teams in the second half. But through five games, Michigan is outscoring its opponents 42 seven in the first quarter, 58 to six in the second quarter, 55 to zero in the third quarter. And then they're tied 17, 17 in the fourth quarter, but they haven't played their starters into the. You got to clean that up. You got to clean it up. Yeah. Well, they started to Saturday. We saw four quarterbacks play. That was that was something. But the offense looked better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess the rambling point I wanted to make about all that is that you know Michigan is kind of it is kind of bludgeoning these teams and taking them out of games much early. And again, Michigan hasn't played anything to the extent of a Florida State or uh, you know if you're Georgia or um, if you're Georgia, like they played South Carolina, they have played uh, Auburn over the weekend, but. I mean, I look at that quarter two, quarter three. That's kind of where you start, to, you know, feeling things out in the first quarter is is very, you know, it's normal. And we saw them got up, get off to their best start of the season on Saturday. Uh, but quarter two and quarter three, that's where you kind of start to hit the accelerator. And Michigan has been outstanding there through five weeks. Yeah, and it's also a style of play thing, too, where Michigan plays a little bit more methodical they play slower they play even slower than they did a few years ago when they were going no huddle now they're in a huddle basically every snap this year um the the clock rule i think has a a pretty big impact there as well so it's kind of just the way michigan plays where they know it's you know if they need to outlast you they can outlast you 
Um, and that makes some of it deceiving. And then you, you factor in the backups in the fourth quarter. Some of these stats in college football are really deceiving too, not to go off on a completely different tangent, but think of the Nebraska being the number one rush defense in the country, according to, you know, yards per game, I mean, yards per game are extremely deceiving. And, you know, I think Michigan coaches used that as motivation last week, but it's not really the best run defense in the country. So that's just one example, but yeah, I, I just think it's the way Michigan plays as well. Um, and, you know, that that bodes well when you do get in some of those tougher games, too. You want a fat, uh, fast start like they did on Saturday. Um, helps to get a, a short field after an interception on the second play on defense. But, uh, you know, regardless, they made those plays. So you got to give them credit. But, um, yeah, it's, you know, I, I just think that this Michigan team, is is built to and, and it has a lot of players that have done it in those big time moments but it's built to rise up in those in those bigger games we've seen it over the last couple of years we saw it even on saturday where it felt like a felt like a bigger game just because they're going on the road and you know second second uh big 10 game of the year and they were they were fantastic so i, I think that they're they're kind of right on the on the right track there they are. And I think when you look at the just the teams around them, I think, again, and this could be a very different discussion in November, certainly into December, January, when the playoff will actually take place. But you look at how Michigan's playing right now. I mean, I, I think if you put them on the same field with Georgia, I don't think that's as, that's as you know, 2021 to a certain extent kind of felt, I don't want to say felt like a death march, but obviously a huge test. Last year, maybe you overlooked TCU a little bit, but it was still going to be you know, an uphill battle to compete with that team. And, you know, a team like, I don't see the star, the same caliber of star power from this Georgia team that we've seen. Obviously Brock Bowers might be, I mean, he's a beast. He might be the best player in college football, but I, I think you put Michigan on a neutral field with Georgia right now. You feel pretty good about that. Ohio state. Certainly. I mean, you go play them in the parking lot right now. We'd feel good about how Michigan stacks up in that matchup. Florida state. We'll see some of these PAC 12 offenses. We'll see, uh, you know, they don't defend quite as well. Certainly not USC. Uh, God, USC is still playing, somehow playing Mac level defense. But, you know, outside of, I kind of, I, I like what I've seen from Texas, but it's still early on. Uh, but when you put into all of this stuff into context, I know the, the thing that everyone's going to yell about with Michigan is that they haven't played anyone. But again, the argument here is that it's more about how you're handling business than who you continue to handle it against. So, uh, it, it again, it, it gets a little bit more difficult this weekend at Minnesota. I'm not sure if that's the best team that they've played yet to this point. They've kind of bit of a they've got a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde thing to them, but they are physical. We know that PJ Fleck will have them ready to go. But uh, I think it was when they played Louisiana on Saturday and they gave up 200 yards rushing. So maybe a maybe another uh, another road scenario where this offensive line can gel and. You just take another step as a run game and as an offense.